Bowman Tobin model. Actually, this theory or this model is the extension or the further development in the Keynesian approach. After World War II, economists begin to take the Keynesian approach to the demand for money even further by developing more precise theories to explain the three Keynesian motives for holding money. Because interest rates were viewed as a crucial element in monetary theory, a key focus of this research was to understand better the role of interest rates in the demand for money. William Baumel and James Tobin independently developed similar demand for money models, which demonstrated that even money balances held for transaction purposes are sensitive to the level of interest rates. In the previous theories, we are saying that the transaction purposes have no relationship with the interest rate. But Tobin's saying that the transaction purposes are sensitive to the level of interest rates. It means that the interest rate have a relationship with your transaction demand for money. In developing this, their model, they consider a hypothetical individual. Suppose there is an individual who is receiving payment or money once a period, once a month and spend it over the course of this period. So in their model, money which earns zero interest is held only because it can be used only to carry out transaction. Look at this example. Suppose there is an individual, there is a person who earns income of about $1,000 each month in a year. So in one year, we have 12 months. And in each month, he is receiving $1,000. So income of that person is 1000 per month and he has two assets. One is known as money and the second one is known as bond. For example, if that person is keeping all of his income in cash, it means he has no concern with bonds and he is not spending some amounts or the total amount on bonds. So can we say that his yearly nominal income will be $12,000 because his monthly income is $1,000. So his yearly income is $12,000. What will be his average monthly balance? So average monthly balance is equal to $1,000 plus $0 divided by 2. $1,000 mean he is receiving $1,000 at the start of the month. And at the end of the month, he has nothing left. So mean zero, 1000 plus zero divided by two. It is equal to $1,000 divided by two and is equal to 500. It means his average monthly balance is $500. We can calculate velocity very easily. Velocity V is equal to PY by M. So PY is equal to 12,000 M. Suppose money supply is $500. V is equal to 24. Now, look at the second case. Keep only one or two half payment in cash. For example, now he realized that I am spending all of my income at, at a constant rate or at the same pattern. I need to spend money somewhere else by buying bonds and I will earn interest. It will give me return. So it means that he is not spending the whole money for transaction purposes, but he is keeping half of the money for transaction purposes and half of the money for buying bonds. So his yearly income is $12,000. And in this case, his average monthly balance is 500 because at the start of the month, he has $500, not 1000. This time, because half of the money he is spending for transaction purposes, and half of the money he is spending for uh, buying bonds. So 500 divided by 2 is equal to 250, which is half amount in the previous case. Now, in this case, velocity is equal to $12,000 divided by $250, which is equal to 48. So in this case, velocity has doubled. What are the gains for this individual? So income gain is equal to I, which is known as interest rate, multiply 500 divided by 2, or 1 divided by 2, 
multiply by 100 multiply 1 suppose interest rate is 1 percent it means he is earning 2.50 dollars per month this is his gains this is his return because he is not spending the whole money on transaction purposes so this is his income gain but there is also increased transaction cost so what we can conclude from this example it means that higher is the interest rate higher is i and income gain from holding money less likely to hold if interest rate is higher and income Gains are there, so people will likely to hold cash in less amount. Therefore, we can say that if interest rate increases, money demanded decreases. That's why we can say that the interest rate and money demand have a negative relationship. So, we can say that the transaction component of the demand for money is negative related to the level of interest rates. In the Tobin model, we are saying that the transaction component of the demand for money is negative related to the level of interest rates. Because the basic idea of this model is that there is an opportunity cost of holding money. The interest rate that can be earned on other assets. There is also a benefit to holding money, the avoidance of transaction cost. So if interest rate increases, people try to economize and their holding of money for transaction purposes so what we can conclude from this discussion the transaction demand for money and not just the speculative demand will be sensitive to interest rate because in the jm keynes theory we are saying that the speculative demand for money is sensitive to the interest rate but in the tobin model we are saying that the transaction demand for money is also sensitive to the interest rate. It means the transaction demand for money have a relationship with the interest rate. If interest rate changes, the transaction demand for money will also change. So this is the new addition to the J.M. Keynes theory.